Hello, and welcome to Getting Started with AWS IoT Core for LoRaWAN, Firmware Update Over the Air, or more concisely, for WOTA. My name is Greg Breen, and I'm an IoT Specialist Solutions Architect with AWS. This video dives straight into the FUOTA feature of the AWS IoT Core for LoRaWAN service. To follow along, it's helpful if you're already somewhat familiar with LoRaWAN, LoRaWAN classes, multicast, unicast, and the AWS IoT Core for LoRaWAN service. To use the FUOTA feature, you must have a LoRaWAN device that supports the LoRa Alliance FUOTA process, specifically, the application layer clock synchronization specification, the fragmented data block transportation specification, and the remote multicast setup specification. You can find links to these specifications in the video description. Most LoRaWAN devices do not support FUOTA at this time, so please check your device documentation. Additionally, you need source code and build tools for your device firmware so you can generate an appropriate binary file to use with FUOTA. In this video, I'll demonstrate FUOTA using an STNucleo WL55JC evaluation board. The STM Cube WL firmware includes the LoRaMac node reference stack. This stack includes implementations of the specifications mentioned on the previous slide. FUOTA can be unicast to a single device or multicast to a group of devices. Due to the low throughput of LoRaWAN, multicast is more common. Additionally, FUOTA can be either Class B or Class C. AWS IoT Core for LoRaWAN supports all of these combinations, with multicast Class C being the most common type. I'll now demonstrate FUOTA. Specifically, multicast FUOTA to a group of Class A devices that temporarily switch to Class C. The steps will follow are create a wireless device that has FUOTA enabled, create a multicast group to synchronize the device time and set up the multicast keys, create a FUOTA task selecting the new firmware binary, add devices to the FUOTA task by assigning the multicast group to it, schedule the FUOTA task to assign the multicast start time duration frequency and data rate, perform the fragmentation session to transport the firmware fragments, and finally, reboot the device to authenticate and run the new firmware, thereby completing the FUOTA task. We begin by creating a new wireless device because it's not possible at this time to add FUOTA to an existing device. We configure the EUIs and the keys in the normal way. We then enable FUOTA. For LoRaWAN 1.0.x devices, we need to supply the Gen App key. This is the root key for deriving multicast session keys. Please check your device documentation for your key value. For this ST Nucleo device, it's just the app key again. We also need to assign the F ports for the multicast, FUOTA, and clock sync packages. The default values are usually correct, as they are for this ST Nucleo device, but please consult your device documentation. Select your profiles and your destination as you normally would and then create the device. Now we create a multicast group that FUOTA will target. We select the RF region the device is in and select Class C as the type of multicast. Normally a multicast group would include multiple devices. For this demonstration however, just a single device is in the group. At this point, we introduce the ST Nucleo device's serial terminal. Here we can see that the firmware app version is 1.2.0. The device has joined the network and is sending uplinks once per minute. We create the multicast group and drill into the group's details. The group status is pending because no session start time has yet been scheduled. The individual device status is package attempting because the multicast group has not been initialized on the device. Upon the next uplink, AWS IoT Core for LoRaWAN issues commands from the application clock layer synchronization specification to synchronize the time and commands from the remote multicast setup specification to create the multicast group. 
With the multicast group created on the device, we can observe that the status of that individual device has changed to multicast setup ready. Note that the multicast group session is not yet scheduled and therefore no start time, session duration, RX frequency nor RX data rate has yet been assigned. We can now proceed to creating a FOTA task. We name the task and select the RF region. We select the firmware binary file to upload. Recall that the running firmware app version was 1.2.0 and this new version is 1.2.1. The binary can be uploaded to an existing S3 bucket or a new bucket can be created. And finally, the FOTA task requires a role granting it permission to get the firmware binary from the S3 bucket. The task can now be created. Drilling into the task details, we can see that the status is pending and that the task still lacks target devices and a session start time. We then add devices to the task by selecting the multicast group that we created earlier. We can now schedule the FOTA task. The session start time has to be at least 30 minutes into the future because AWS IoT Call for LoRaWAN needs to send setup messages to every device in the task. The task now has a session start time and the state has changed from pending to session waiting. Upon the next uplink, AWS IoT Call for LoRaWAN issues a command from the remote multicast setup specification to schedule the multicast Class C session. The device is now furnished with the session start time, session duration, RX frequency and RX data rate. At some point before the start of the session, AWS IoT Call for LoRaWAN issues commands from the Fragmented Data Block Transportation specification to set up the fragmentation session. All is now in readiness. At the scheduled time, the device switches to Class C in preparation for receiving the firmware binary file fragments. A short time later, Fragment transmission begins on the scheduled frequency and data rate. The time taken to transfer the entire firmware image depends on the size of the image, 78 kilobytes in this example, the fragment size negotiated between AWS IoT Core for LoRaWAN and the device, 48 bytes in this example, the RX data rate used for the session, and the number of fragments lost during the transfer. Just under an hour later, the fragmentation reaches its conclusion. In this case, only two fragments were lost. The device has to continue past 1,638 fragments to recover the two lost fragments. With all fragments received, the device reboots, authenticates the new firmware, and starts it if authentication succeeds. As we can see, the new firmware version 1.2.1 is successfully started and the device rejoins the network. Returning to the FUOTA task, the device status is now successful and the task status is done. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please ask them at repost.aws where you can leverage the entire AWS community. I may see you there. Goodbye for now.